the solar system, like the moon and Mars. And so they would see very clearly there that we are not doing shit, but that the universe around us the, the, is full of, of bodies like the shoemaker Lady comets that ran into Jupiter, and that we ought to be really worried about that. Not about what our fellow man is doing, but we should be putting up an umbrella of some kind to protect us from that, because we have reached that level of complexity in our, you know, our technical capability. It would not be beyond it right now if we were to concentrate very heavily on that. It, it would give a mission to the space people, the, the NASA kind of people. It's like, this is what we're here for, is to set up the places to watch for that from and the solutions to it. What do you do when you see something three kilometers in diameter heading to Earth, 17,000 miles an hour, and it's going to be here in a month. What do we do? You know, right now, we watch it on television. You know, and nothing else. There's very little else to do. We don't have the, we don't have, we, we should have built by now the ability to deal with it. I mean, we've got that capability, right? We've got plenty of evidence that it happens. You know, we've got a lot more evidence than we need. I mean, you just have to see one or two holes in the ground that are huge. You know what's happened here in not not necessarily historical time, although something really bad could have happened in the last 2,000 years that we don't really have a good, you know, we don't have really good records of. It could have wiped out a lot of, of the Earth. And, and now we've got a very fragile film of, of civilization that would be really badly disrupted by something that wouldn't even have to be like, 65 million years ago, that kind of thing. It could be something much, could be something a kilo, like a kilometer wide it's landing anywhere on this planet. If it's in the ocean somewhere, half the people in the world would drown. <laughs> half of the people in the world are probably living within a couple of hundred meters of sea level, right? And something that was a kilometer wide that smashed in the ocean would cover the tidal wave that would go around the world. And we're just sitting here blithely you know, thinking that we, by our CO2 emissions or something like that, in, in 100 or 200 years, are going to choke ourselves to death or whatever we're going to do. And we're, we're absolutely out of our mind. I mean, we could think, no, it's not going to be us. I mean, that would be an inconvenient thing to have the temperature go up a little bit or go down a little bit. But we don't really have much control over that, probably. That's, that's all very theoretical. This other stuff is not. This is real. I mean, you look at the surface of the moon and you can say, you know, things have been flying around here for a long time. I mean, look at, at what happened to Jupiter just two years ago, right? That's real. We saw that. We have pictures of that. We said, that's going on. And there's good reason to believe that it's going on everywhere all the time. There's not a whole lot of, like, interstellar traders here for some reason. Right. We're not doing a lot of, there's just not, there's not a lot of visitors from other planets selling us stuff, right? I mean, you would think that he'd be here. There's nowhere on the Earth that you can't buy all kinds of items from other countries, right? But there's nowhere on the Earth that you can buy something from another planet. They're not here. Why not? The universe must be full of planets that have evolved life, right? Maybe they don't have as much. Maybe this is an exception. And we've just been lucky that nobody's hit, nothing's landed here big in a long time. And so we've had time to develop from, like, you know, a couple of million years of peaceful, sort of, you know, fairly decent weather and, 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 and no really huge thing from space. But maybe it's, it's more the exception than the rule. I mean, we, if we look around us, we should be able to make that connection. So it is more the exception than the rule because in our lifetime we saw it happen on Jupiter already. You know, and if we look at the moon, the surface of the moon, we say, well, damn thing's been smashed all to pieces. You know, and, and if you start looking for those, those like the debris from them around the Earth, so you find them. So it isn't a trivial thing. And for some reason, it's something we're completely just walking around like we're sleepwalking, you know, since we're saying, you know, we are at that point in our development in civilization where we could do something about it, but we don't. We don't have the, we don't have the, somehow our imagination will not go a little further than just, it, it's easy, a lot of people are t totally concerned 
about the future of the earth, right? But they're, they're for the wrong reasons. They're not seeing that, you know, it, 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 it could get a little hotter, or maybe we could cool the temperatures go up or down or whatever. That's possible. But that would be an inconvenience compared to all of, of Belgium being underwater for a few minutes. <laughs> it, would just, it would just be ridiculous what would happen if something ran a kilometer wide landed in the Atlantic Ocean. Goodbye to Europe. But in a way, it's like uh, we think that we have control about the same uh, infectious diseases, but there is no actually control. Well, we don't either. I know, but that, you know, even something like another terrible epidemic of the flu wouldn't be nearly as destructive. As something that would, I mean, a, a a bigger thing, something like three kilometers or five kilometers, would destroy civilization completely. There would be unlikely that anybody would live through it. You know, I mean that. That is real, and it is there, and, it's, and people are, for some reason, sleepwalking, and they're not seeing that because we are right now, at first time in our history, as we, as far as we know of, capable of doing something about that. But we're not. We're not spending very much money even looking for those things. We're spending a ten, twenty-five million dollars, maybe, you know, specifically looking for Earth-crossing orbit things that are that are that are coming past. There's a lot of them. But so far, nobody's found that one, one or two, three kilometer wide thing that's actually going to hit. But it's there. It's got our number on it already. It's on its way. And it's just a matter of time, you know. And who's looking for it? There's a few people that are looking for it frantically, you know. I mean, some people have put some money into it, but not, not on a big scale. Not like we put in, we put in, you know, hundreds of millions of dollars to look for the Higgs boson, right? Some completely theoretical thing that only 10 people on the planet understand why we would want to know about it. You know? <laughs> and they would care. It would be on the front page of the paper just one day. You know? If we put a lot of money into that, we, we should put that money into something like a network of, of, of orbiting uh, telescopes that are watching, that are, that are cataloging everything in the solar system that could possibly... Because, you know, some of the asteroid one day is going to go <laughs> around another one and bang, it's on an orbit right directly toward the Earth. And we can watch it, and we can cry about it, you know, and we'll be, a, we, we will be able to see it on television right up to the moment that it hits. But we'll feel stupid. Tell you what you're saying. Somebody ought to do something. Somebody would, some idiot, like, like, you know, one guy, like Gates, Instead of trying to cure malaria, you know, there's all these big Gates challenge thing. He could take care of that. You know, he could start something that way. And NASA could say, that's why we're here. It's not just for the thrill of going into space. We have to do this. Otherwise, we are not going to see the distant future. You know, we're never going to get out of here if we don't protect ourselves here until we start flying around to other places. And that apparently doesn't happen too often to a civilization because we, have, we haven't seen any evidence of that. So, I, mean, I mean, I don't go for those arguments about, well, it's just too far away and nobody would be interested because I'm sure they would be. You know, there's just not that many people out there. And it might be that, that they're all as stupid as we are. You, don't, you know, you go right through this, you only have so many, many millions of years and then that happens again and you start over again. And it happens again. And then sort of, you know, it, very few civilizations catch on that you have to. It isn't benign. There's something out there.